Sofa Squad and welcome back to Black Sofa. Now I was going through YouTube looking for videos to respond to and I came across 10 questions for atheists from an atheist. So I thought I'd give it a go. So let's get into this, shall we? Here are 10 questions that I have for my fellow atheists. If you are a former theist, at what age did you become an atheist? I was 37 when I began to have serious doubts due to a mental health crisis. Or rather, those doubts had been there for a long time, but the mental health crisis brought them to the forefront of my mind, and I couldn't ignore them anymore. It was then I began to think about them more seriously, as well as reading the Bible more objectively and critically. I eventually gave up my faith altogether about a year later. Are you an outspoken anti-theist, or are you an atheist who doesn't mind religion? I'm not sure, to be honest. I guess I am anti-theist in the sense that I make videos responding to Christian videos, and I challenge some of the more unfounded claims that Christians make on Twitter. The reason why I focus specifically on Christianity and not other religions is because I have a Christian background and I studied at a Christian theological college. So when it comes to Christianity, I know what I'm talking about. What do you consider to be the best argument for God? Probably the fact that we cannot know with any real certainty how the universe came into existence. But that doesn't get you to a God necessarily, and it certainly doesn't get you to any specific God, Christ, for example, or Allah. At the very most, it gets you to some form of agnostic deism. What do you consider to be the best argument against God? The fact that any kind of child abuse exists. If I were an all-powerful, all-loving, all-knowing, all-present God, I would ensure that that never happened. But the fact that it does exist means that if God does exist, he, if you're part of my gender type, is either incapable of preventing child abuse, in which case he is not all-powerful, or he is unwilling, in which case he is an evil, mean, callous, vindictive God and not worthy of worship, or he does not exist. Q-E-D. Do your loved ones, as in parents or significant other, genuinely fear that you'll go to hell? And if they do, how do you deal with their fear? Really? I do have loved ones who believe in God, but they don't really believe in hell. Or, if they do, they don't take it very seriously, so it never really comes up. What religion do you consider to be the worst? Personally, I think that Islam is the worst. Simply because, at its core, is the belief that there can be no peace until no religion except Islam exists. And 
there is no country where Islam does not rule. Muslims who are actively aiming to bring this about are practicing true Islam and following the true example of their prophet Muhammad. This is why Islam is so dangerous. Is there an argument that you wish fellow atheists would stop using? I do wish that some atheists would stop assuming that all theists are either stupid, ignorant or mentally ill. I think this is a very lazy assumption to make. Some Christians are actually very intelligent and have carefully considered their theology and have a sound theological basis for their faith. Francis Collins is a Christian who discovered the genes associated with a number of diseases and led the Human Genome Project. Alistair McGrath has debated Richard Dawkins and given him a run for his money. Have you ever changed the mind of a theist after a discussion or debate? No, I haven't, but not for lack of trying. What advice do you have for atheists who are brought up in religious households in communities who fear telling their peers about their lack of belief in God? To be honest, I don't know how to answer that one. But there are organizations that can help, like the Freedom From Religion Foundation, for example, who advocate for atheists agnostics and non-theists, and I'll leave a link down below. What do you think of self-proclaimed gay Christians and gay Muslims, considering that neither one of their respective holy books are fond of homosexuality? I can't speak for gay Muslims, but I once knew a gay Christian who saw no conflict with his sexuality and his faith because he interpreted the Bible in light of the original historical context as well as the context of the original Greek and Hebrew and how the text would have been understood by those who heard it first. He came to the conclusion that there is a difference between temple prostitution and sex in a loving relationship between two consenting adults, and many Christians have come to the same conclusion. Leave your answers in the comments, or if you make a video response, post a link to it and I'll watch it. Please share this video with your friends and take care. Thanks. And thanks to Germania for those challenging questions. If you've liked this video and you'd like to see more like it, then give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, do subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so that you never miss another video. Okay, bye for now.